This evening, before we actually begin our devotion, we call upon Prim to extend an official welcome to us on behalf of the members of the Mandir. Sitaram, everyone. Officiating Vyas Pandit Rajendra Maharaj, Ujari Pandit Pandit Surindra Maharaj. Sarotas, members of the Kirtan group, and you, the wonderful devotees who have come out here this evening to support us in our yajna. On behalf of the management committee of this Shri Ganesh Mandir, let me welcome you. I want to welcome each and every one of you for coming out here this evening. 
As you all know, and all of us know, the season we are in, I'm glad to see you people attending our year dinner tonight. And hopefully, probably a little later on, you might see more devotees here. Pandit Rajendra Maharaj is no stranger to us. Panditji have been officiating in our yajnas in this mandir for quite a number of years. So, I don't want to elaborate too much on it because every one of us here knows Pandit Rajendra. For those of you who are coming here for the first time, we say, let this be the first of many more visits to our temple. You see, I don't want to take much of your time, but also I want to welcome the Sankhya TV, who will be taking this broadcast worldwide. So we want to thank Sankhya TV and the sponsors for coming here this evening and taking this broadcast. I don't want to take much of your time, as I say, so I'll pass you over to Pandeji. Pandeji? Prem Sabali Shurama Pati Mahadev Ki Jai, and very special thanks to Prem for that wonderful welcome on behalf of the members of the Mandir here. And of course, we are very happy to be here tonight to join together with you in this Shiva Mahapuran Yagya to instill, to inculcate, to nurture in our minds and our hearts, to kindle that fire of devotion for the lotus like feet of Shankar Bhagwan. At this point in time, Khara Ho Jai. Let us all stand as we join together in Bhagwan Shankar Ji Ki Aarati. Sajam Chavar Shitam Yuktam Vahina Yojitam Maya Deepam Grahana Devasya Prarokyam Timara Jai Shiva Omkara, Har Shiva Omkara. Jai Shiva Omkara, Har Shiva Omkara. Jai Shiva Omkara, Har Shiva Omkara. Brahma Vishnu Sada. Shiva Adhangi Dhara
अक्षमाला बनमाला मुंडमाला धारी श्रुमापति महादेव की पवन सुत हनुमान की श्री वृंदावन बिहारी लाल की उरे सा जगन्नाथ की बोलो भाई सब संतन की सियापति रामचंद्र की जय आसमी जी कहीं 
our officiating Pujadi Pandit, Vanek Surindra Maharaj, Shrutagan Bhattajan, devotees of God. Once again tonight, on behalf of the members of the Shri Ganesh Mandir here at Joe Countries, Shub Swagatam, a very special welcome to you tonight uh, to the first of Shiv Puran Katha. We have this wonderful opportunity, my dear friends, tonight and for the coming nights to delve into the golden pages of Shiva Mahapuran and explore and expound the divine glories, the divine charitra of Bhagwan Shiva Shankarji. But before we actually get into Katha, we firstly join together in Dhyan, in meditation. And for this purpose, we assume a most comfortable posture as we close our eyes and bring to our minds that most benevolent form of Lord Shiva. He Shiva Shankar, He Deen Dayalu, O All Merciful Lord. Tonight, as we come together in this beautiful Yagya Shale, we do so with one common purpose, O Prabhu. And that is surrender unto you our prema or bhakti, our love and devotion. Bless us this night to the successful completion of our devotions here this evening. And through your divine blessings enable us to receive and to understand the wonderful katha contained in the pages of Shiv Mahapuram. And so as we focus our thoughts and energies uh, on that most wondrous, beauteous form of Lord Shiva, the delight of the Rishis and the Munis, the sons and the Sadhus. We now glorify that Divine Lord uh, in His manifold manifestations. Saraswati Namaha Shri Guru Charan Kamale Yogamu Namaha Om Pranam Shirishadevam Gauri Putram Vinayakam Vasam smare nityam ayuhuka arita siddhaye vidyaram he vivahicha praveshe nirgame tatha sangrame sankate chaiva vighanatasya najayate Om Shwet Paramasanam Devim Shwet Pushpo Pasho Bhinim Shwetam Vardharam Nityam Shwet Gandhino Lepanam Dhyana Moolam Gurur Murti Pooja Moolam Gurur Param Mantra Moolam Guru Vakyam Moksha Moolam Guru Param Adhyantara Hite Devi Adi Shakti Maheshwari Yog Jai Yog Sambhute Mahalakshmi Namastute Om Bhadra Kali Namo Nityam Sarvishakti Swarupini Jagat Stite Jaganamata Narayani Namastute 
नागेन्द्रहाराय त्रिलोचनाय भस्मंगराय महेश्वराय निचाय सुधाय दिगंबराय कस्मकाराय नमः शिवाय मनुज मारुत तुल्य वेगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धि मता वरिष्ठ वातात्मचम वानदूत मुख्यम श्रीराम दूत शरण प्रबद्धे नीलांभुज श्यामल को मलांगम सीता समारो पतिभाग्यम पानु महासायक चारु चापम नमामि राम रघुवन सनाथन या देवी सर्वभूतेशु दुर्गा रूपेन संस्कृत नमस्त से नमस्त से नमस्त से नमो नम या देवी सर्वभूतेशु शक्ति रूपेन संस्कृत नमस्त से नमस्त से नमस्त से नमो नम या देवी सर्वभूतेशु मातृपेण संस्कृत नमस्त से नमस्त से नमस्त से नमो नम ओम शांति 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 हरि Let us firstly join together in glorifying that divine Lord, Shri Ganesh Bhagwan. To the blessings of Bhagwan Ganapati, all success and auspiciousness is attained in our various undertakings. The divine Lord Ganesh Bhagwan is described as Pratham Pujya, first to be worshipped and honoured, is Big Ganeshwar. The removal of all obstacles and impediments from our pathway. Gaye Ganapati Jagandam Shankar Suvan Bhavani Nandan Sing the praises of Bhagwan Ganapati is worshipped even by the devis and devatas. He is the son of Shankar Bhagwan and Devi Parvati Mata, and he is the very embodiment of perfection. When we receive his blessings, we too, my dear friends, strive for perfection in our own lives. Gaye Ganapati Jagavandam. Gaye Ganapati Jagavandam. Creep. 
पासिंधु सुंदर सबलायक शंकर सुवन भवानी नंदन शंकर सुवन भवानी नंदन गाये गणपति जगवंदन गाये गणपति जगवंदन श्री गजानंद स्वामी की जय शिव महापुराण लिस्ट 1008 नेम्स ऑफ लॉर्ड शिव वी विल ट्राई टू गो थ्रू 108 ऑफ दोस 1008 नेम्स इन अदर वर्ड्स वी गोइंग टू एक्सट्रैक्ट व्हाट आर द मोर पॉपुलर और वेल नोन नेम्स टू अस एंड आल्सो लुक एट द meanings of these 108 names and the first name of course is the most popular shiva shiva means pure and auspicious whenever you chant that name om namah shivaya the panch akshar mantra you are invoking purity and auspiciousness my dear friends into your life the two greatest values the two greatest virtues my dear friends of any human being to be pure and to be auspicious so continuously chant the name shiva he is also known as rudra Rudra means the terrible one terrible to the rakshasas but compassionate to the devotees so in that form of rudra he has defeated my dear friends many many demons the wicked rakshasas who would bring great hardship and difficulties to the sons and the sadhus and so on and interrupt their devotion so he is the rudra the terrible to the demons but to the devatas my dear friends he is most pleasant he is maheshwar the third name of lord shiva maheshwar means he is the great lord the great lord of this universe the fourth name chandramouli he 
who has the moon chandra devta upon his jata trilochan means he has three eyes and all of us have three eyes eh? the two physical eyes and the third eye the trikuti in the case of lord shiva the third eye is activated in our case my dear friends the third eye remains dormant just like a volcano remains dormant for many many years and then erupts my dear friends with all its power and energy so too trilochan he has three eyes and his blessings my dear friends inspires us to activate that third eye as well the sixth name mahadev the great one mahadev Vrishvahan, the seventh name, means he who has the Vrish or the bull as his Vahan or vehicle. You know Lord Ganesha's Mushak Vahan. So he has the Vahan or the vehicle of the Mushak, the mouse. And Lord Shiva is Vrishvahan, he who possesses the bull, my dear friends, as his Vahan. Eight, name of Shankar Bhagwan, Girijapati, or the consort of Devi Padvati Mata. The ninth name, Nilkant, he who possesses that blue throat. And of course, we know this entire Shivratri celebration, my dear friends, is centered around Shankar Bhagwan ingesting or swallowing that halahal that emerged from the Samudra Manthan or the churning of the ocean. Thus he is called Nilkant or the blue throated one. Gangadhar, the tenth name of Lord Shiva, means he has Ganga Mata or he supports Ganga Mata from his Jata. And we all know, my dear friends, that Ganga Mata entered into the Jata of Shankar Bhagwan when she came to this earthly planet to redeem the sons of Raja Sagar of their sins that they had committed. Ugraya, the eleventh name of Lord Shiva, means fierce. The twelfth name, Kapalin, means he is the one who has that Mundan Mal or the Mala made out of skulls. As you know, he possesses my dear friends, and perhaps in the coming night we will deal with how, in fact, he came to wear that necklace or that mala made out of skulls. So on that account, he is called Kapalin, he who wears the mala of skulls. Thirteenth, Jatadhari, he who possesses the jata or the matted hair upon his head. Fourteenth, Kailashpati, or the Lord of Kailash Padavat. Do you know the Buddhist Kailash Padavat is the only mountain in the world that has four faces that corresponds exactly to the four cardinal directions. It is often described as a center of the universe. Whilst many have ascended the Himalayan Padavat, my dear friends, none has been able to ascend to Kailash Padavat, the home of Shankar Bhagwan. So Kailashpati means he is a lord of Kailash Parvat. Digambar means the naked one. And why does he, why is he described, my dear friends, as a naked one to perform the celestial Nataraj dance, my dear friends, at the time of Pralai. Pralai means dissolution of the universe, the end of it all, my dear friends, he is called the Gambar. Pashupati, the sixteenth name of Lord Shiva, means he is the Lord of all animals, the protector of all animals. And what does that indicate? You see, all the names, my dear friends, have hidden meanings, you know. So if he is Pashupati, the Lord or the protector of the animals, then are we supposed to harm or hurt the animals? No, certainly not. My dear friends, even more so not to take the lives of those animals, because if you harm, injure, take the lives of the animals, you are going against Pashupati. And who is Pashupati? None other than Lord Shiva. Videsh. The Lord of Love, 
Trishulin, the bearer of the Trishul, he who possesses the Trishul, the 19th name Vibhu, which means he is the all pervading Lord, and Brahman, the 20th name, the knower of Brahman, the supreme self. As we say, there are 108 names, and as we noted, my dear friends, Shiva Mahapuran actually lists 1,008 names. And so, my dear friends, we have uh, this uh, wonderful opportunity tonight to glorify that Divine Lord, Salah Shiv Bhagwan, in His various manifestations and by His various names. Nagadevata Trahima and the bhajan tells us of yet another name of Lord Shiva, Nagadevata, which means he's the Lord of snakes. And of course, Nagadevata adorns the neck of Lord Shiva, just as you would wear a chain, a mala around your neck. He has Nagadevata around his neck. Nagadevata Trahimam Pahimam Nagadevata Trahimam Pahimam He Vishnu ko sayyati sunani Komal Komal Ang Tihara Sham Rang Tora Nag Tiyara Jil Mil Jil Mil Chal Tihari Jil Mil Jil Mil Chal Tihari Chai Se Jamura Chal Ti And now, devotees, we turn our attention to our katha tonight, taken from the pages of Shiva Mahapuran. We continue to dedicate our thoughts to that uh, Divine Lord, that, that most benevolent Lord, Sada Shiv Bhagwan. Shivaya Nam Shiva Shivaya Nam Shiva Shivaya Nam Om Nam Shivaya Sapkoi Shivaya Nam Shiva Shivaya Nam Shiva Shivaya Nam Om Nam Shivaya Shiva Nama Shiva, Shiva, Nama Shiva, Shiva, Nama Shiva, Shiva, Nama Shiva, Shiva, Nama Om, Nama Shiva, Shiva, Nama Om, Nama Shiva, Sutuji Maharaj Boli. He Munishwaru, 
This katha, my dear friends, is being narrated by Sutuji Maharaj to Shaunak Muni and the other 88,000 rishis and munis in the name Mishad in your forest. You and I have this wonderful opportunity to share in this narration, my dear friends, that took place thousands of years ago in the name Mishad in your forest. प्रसिद्ध हो जाता है शिवलिंगों को वर्णन करते हैं जिनके दर्शन से सर्व पाप नष्ट हो जाते हैं और सब मनोरथ पूरे होते हैं जिनकी पूजा से कोई दुख और पाप नहीं रहता है उनमें से एक तीर्थ को पंच प्रयाग है जहां स्नान करने से तुरंत हो सर्व प्रकार के दुख जाते रहते हैं वहां शिव भगवान के दर्शन दिया उनका हम वर्णन करते हैं अर्थात सर्व पाप में लीलेश्वर और देवेश्वर हो लिंग शिव भगवान हो प्रसन्न हो जाता है होकर अपने भक्त की कृतार्थ को कर देते हैं उसके उत्तर और रुद्र प्रयाग में रुद्रेश्वर शिव जी भगवान जिसको पूजा से संपूर्ण पाप दूर हो जाता है कनक लेत्र को मैं जहा शिव जी भगवान दीक्षा पति में यज्ञ हो बिपिन कर फिर प्रसन्न हो यज्ञ पूर्ण हो कर आया उसी स्थान पर लिंग स्वरूप होकर स्थित हुए और देवेश्वर में नाम प्रसिद्ध हो जाता है वरणासी इनका बहुत बड़ी महिमा है जिनको पूजा से कोई दीप दान पाप में नहीं रहता है शिवाय नम शिव शिवाय नम शिव शिवाय नमो नम शिवाय शिवाय नम शिव शिवाय शिव शिवाय नमो नम शिवाय शिवाय नमो in the kingdom of Karanaki, there lived the Brahman, a very great devotee of Shankar Bhagwan, Mahabhakta. Every day he would perform Poojan to Sarashiv Bhagwan. He had two sons and a wonderful Dulahim. And my dear friends, he instilled in that household that love for devotion to Shankar Bhagwan. As such, in that home of this Brahman, in that city of Karanaki, my dear friends, there abounded peace and happiness and contentment. There was wealth and riches in abundance in the home of that Brahman. All of these wonderful blessings, my dear friends, were bestowed upon that family through the blessings of Shankar Bhagwan and their regular devotion to Lord Shiva. Someone in the, in the home, my dear friends, needs to set the example, to set the tone, to lay down that pattern, my dear friends, whereby the other members of that family would follow. 
Here we see the head of the home, the Brahman, is leading by example. Every single morning, he would encourage his two sons, they were very young at that time, to take the lotus of Jal and offer to Lord Shiva, to pick the bay leaves and offer upon the Shivalingam, to chant that Panchakshad mantra, Om Namah Shiva. And so the two boys grew up. You know, with this loving example set by their father, and even as they grew into young adults, into young men, my dear friends, they themselves developed that love for worship, for puja, and as such, my dear friends, they were very peaceful young men, the two sons of this Brahman. Here's a wonderful example, my dear friends, how we ourselves in our own homes could inculcate for our families, for our children, that love of devotion, for devotion to Bhagwan Shiva Shankarji. And you would see, my dear friends, long after this father has died and left his family behind because he has taught his sons well, they did not abandon, you know, that pathway of bhakti marg that he has taught them but even when he died my dear friends they continued the wonderful tradition the wonderful culture the wonderful practice of religion my dear friends that was taught to them by their pitaji by their father we say matri deva bhava pitri deva bhava the mother and father are the first god and the first guru we are the ones, my dear friends, yes, you will perform Guru Muk Sanskar and the child would have a Guru. But you are the one, firstly, who would introduce that child to devotion, to puja. You are the first one who would begin to teach that child the mantras, as this father taught his sons, Om Namah Shivai. Perhaps he didn't know the longer mantras. The big Sanskrit mantras, but my dear friends, we are told, even if you chant the simplest of mantra, with that bhav, with that bhakti, with that devotion, this would be accepted by Lord Shiva as well. And so my dear friends, eventually, this father grew much uh, older, he became very elderly, and he desired to visit Varanasi. But by that time, his wife, his Dulahin, had also grown very old. She too desired to visit Varanasi, but she did not have the capability to travel so far. And so she said to him, you go alone. At least you can perform this tirat. And by performing this tirat to Varanasi, both of us would receive the blessings. You see, the words of the Dulahin, she understands you know, if the husband has visited Varanasi and he prays, both wife and husband share in those blessings. Devotion to God is not a selfish thing, my dear friends. When you pray on a morning time or evening time or whatever time of the day that you pray, you pray for all members of the family. As a matter of fact, Hindu goes further than that, you know. When you do Kalash Puja, we perform universal puja. It represents Vishnu Bhagwan. You pray for the benefit of the entire universe. So devotion to God is never intended to be a selfish thing. I pray for me and me alone. For me alone to benefit. No, my dear friends. We pray for all. And so she says to him, I cannot walk so far. And you will understand, my dear friends, this katha is thousands of years old. When you needed to travel from point A to point B, there was no motor car to go and undertake that journey. You had to travel by walking. And if you could not walk, you could not reach to your destination. So she's saying to him, I cannot walk so far. You can still travel. You go ahead. Pray for both of us. I too shall receive the blessings of Varanasi. And what is so special about Varanasi, my dear friends? We are told at a time of pralai, which is the dissolution of the universe, Lord Shiva holds that entire city of Varanasi upon his trishul. And the forces of dissolution, be it fire, be it water, be it whatever forces are unleashed upon this universe at the time of dissolution, Varanasi, my dear friends, is saved. 
And those who live in Varanasi, my dear friends, are safeguarded at the time of the destruction of this universe. So Varanasi is recorded here and described here in Shiva Mahapuran as the most auspicious of all places of Tirat. And so he understands this, this elderly Brahman, he understands this. And so he says to his sons, Look after your mother whilst I am not here. Ensure that she is taken care of, that she is well fed, and of course, you continue with all the put and so on that you perform in this household on a daily basis. Giving these instructions to his family, he leaves now Karnaki, where he lives, to go to Varnasi, where he is going to perform Tirat, devotion to Lord Shiva. This is a very long journey, my dear friends. It will take several weeks. You know, it's not like you're walking from Joe countries to Pinal. You might make it in half an hour or maybe one hour as the case may be. This journey will take several weeks to leave Karanaki and go to Varanasi. Eventually, devotees, he arrives in that city of Varanasi. He performs Tirat there in the city of Varanasi. And after he has performed that Tirat, my dear friends, what happens? He dies. He never returns to his family. He dies right there in that city of Varanasi. The Antim Sanskar, the last rites were performed right there in Varanasi. You know the family doesn't say, look, you must bring back this body to Karanaki to perform the last rites here. If you have died, if you are blessed enough, you know, to die in Varanasi, my dear friends, then such a death is considered to be very auspicious. And so right there, my dear friends, his ashes were Offer in Nandi Keshwar Tirtha, a very special uh, place of pilgrimage, my dear friends, in Varanasi. And so, when this news reached the family, of course, the elderly wife could not go, the sons did go and perform the last rites for the Pitaji, and they offered the ashes into the waters there and returned to their elderly mother. But she was very happy. She was happy, my dear friends, to, to learn that her husband had died in such a sacred place. You know, sometimes you hear people say, this person had a good death. Well, whenever somebody dies, you know, it's a sad thing. It's a distressing thing for the family members. But there is such a thing, my dear friends, as a good or auspicious death. And certainly this Brahman had a very auspicious death, dying there in that city of Varanasi. And so, you know, uh, she felt very happy, my dear friends, uh, that uh, he had died there and had achieved, he had achieved this goal, my dear friends, uh, of spending his last moments in Varanasi. Shiva Shankar Mahadev Shiva Ji Sukh Ka Sagar Hai Lord Shiva Shankar Bhagwan is described as, an, as that ocean of eternal bliss and happiness. His blessings enables us to cross this bhau sagar successfully. Sukha karata, dukha harata. He blesses us with all happiness and remove all difficulties and trials and tribulations from our lives as he did, my dear friends, for this Brahman. Sukha karata, dukha harata. Sagar, 
सुख का सागर है My dear friends, eventually, after some years, the mother as well passed on. And in her dying moments, she said to her two sons, 
when you have performed my last rites, the Antim Sanskar, take my ashes to Varanasi. Just as your father's ashes were offered in the waters of Varanasi, so too I wish that my ashes would be offered into the Nandikeshwar Tirth, Art Varanasi. You know, sometimes people migrate, they live abroad, you know, and they wish when they have died, they might live the majority of their lives. Though born in Trinidad, they live the majority of their lives abroad. They also issue or make that request, issue that request that, you know, they wish the ashes to be returned to the Janma Bhumi or the land of their birth here at home. And this is the mother's wish that her ashes would be taken to Varanasi there and of course offered into the waters at Nandikeshwar Tirth. So the eldest son, whose name is Suvadi, after the last rites and so on has been performed, he takes the ashes, my dear friends, and he leaves home, Karnaki, and he is going to Varanasi just as his father had done many years before him. After he had traveled for several days, he arrived at this little village. He has not as yet reached Varanasi, but he decides, you know, it's very late one evening, the sun has set, it is growing dark, and nearby there's a home, and so he goes to that home, he calls out to the people in that home, and he asks to spend the night there at that home. And they welcome him. You know, as Hindus, we believe, Atithi Devo Bhava, the uninvited guests should be welcomed and should be offered some hospitality, whether it is something to eat, something to drink, or as in the case of Suvadi, he wanted a place to spend the night. Of course, in the times in which we live, if an unknown person shows show up at your home, you would be better advised to, you know, politely refuse him because you know you have all sorts of individuals going around now from home to home from village to village they're not seeking food they're not seeking help they're seeking to you know hold you up and you know steal your belongings and sometimes you know even worse than that but the times in which this katha took place my dear friends was a very pleasant time, it was a very peaceful time of genuine people, you know, who would genuinely seek assistance. And so, my dear friends, at that point in time, they welcomed Suvadi and they offered him a place to sleep after they had given him food and so on. They offered him a place to sleep in the Gaushala. What is the Gaushala? The cattle pen. You know, you have, um, the, in Hinduism, we look upon the cow as a mother, as Gaumata. You know, we have five mothers. We suppose, we speak of Pach Matrika Pujan. What are these? Our earthly mother. We suppose to pay our respects to our earthly mother every day, not once a year when you do puja and so on, every day. So Pach Matrika Pujan should be performed every day. Our earthly mother, Gau Mata to the cow, Dharti Mata to the earth, because we look upon the earth as a mother. Whatever we eat that sustains us comes from the earth. So Dharti Mata Pujan, Ved Mata Pujan, we look upon the Vedas. The Shiv Puran, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, all the religious texts as a mother. For just as a mother would teach a child, the religious texts also, my dear friends, is really imparting this knowledge to us. The Baba is merely the medium, you know, through which this knowledge is transmitted. But the sacred texts, my dear friends, whichever yajna you perform, you will see Baba would perform what is called Pustak Puja, a puja to the book. You must worship the book. The written word becomes alive when it is read. You see, we begin to, at the start of Katha, we read the lines, the shlokas of Shiva Mahapuran, and now we are expounding the Katha. So first you read the lines of the written text, and it comes alive, my dear friends, when it is read in this manner. So Ved Mata is looked upon as a mother as well not laptop matter and computer matter eh? 
Ved Mata, the written word, my dear friends. No, don't get me wrong. The laptop is for research. The computer is for research. But it is, ne it is not, it was never designed to replace Ved Mata. The book, my dear friends, Pustak Puja should be performed. And when it is performed and the text is read, the sacred lines are read, it becomes alive and meaningful and worthwhile. So Ved Mata is also a mother. And then there's Jagat Mata. Jagat Mata is universal mother. Durga Mata. Lakshmi Mata, Sita Mata, Saraswati Mata, all the mothers are one, has personified, has embodied from one divine mother. So Pach Matrika Pujan must be performed. So where do they put Suvari to sleep? In the Gaushala or the cow pen. And he was very happy. For in his mind, this was the best room in the house. This was the VIP room, you know. And so the cows are there, there was a, a mother cow and a bacha, that is, a baby cow, a little cow, you know. And so uh, he has eaten the food that has been given to him, and he's lying down, you know, in the gaushala, you know, upon a bed of grass, you know, and he's preparing to spend the night there. But um, the master of the cow, the owner of the home, he comes to milk the cow. But whilst he's milking the cow, the little bacha also comes to drink some milk. So he's having a hard time milking, and of course the bacha is hungry, so she wants to drink some milk as well. So when he, she's getting in his way, he hits the baby cow, the bacha. But the mother is angry. Any mother, you know, would become angry and upset with you if you hit her child. And my dear friends, you know when we were doing the names of Lord Shiva, Pashupati means he is the Lord and the protector of the animals. You know, sometimes we believe that cruelty to the animals is okay, but not so at all. It is not okay, my dear friends, in the eyes of Lord Shiva. So we should refrain from doing so. So he hits the cow, that's the baby cow, the bacha, and he, you know, ties her one side so that he can milk the cow, the mother cow, or, you know, all that he wants to. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the owner of the cow, if they're not careful, they take away all the cow from the, all the milk from the butcher and leaves the young heifer hungry. You know, and this is not a nice thing, obviously. The mother's cow, the mother's milk, firstly, is for the baby cow, for the butcher. And then, of course, for us who wish to also partake of it. And after he has you know, filled his bucket, then he allows the bacha to come. But by that time, you know, there's very little milk left uh, for the bacha. And so this makes the mother even more upset. So she is saying to um, her bacha, and we are told here in Shiv Puran that Suvadi has the ability to understand what the mother is saying to, the, to her baby. You know? And there's communication, you know. We sometimes we believe that the animals are not intelligent at all. But now we know, my dear friends, that the communication there is, the sounds that they make, they are in fact communicating with each other. And the mother says to her bacha that I am very upset, I am very angry with the master for beating you in this manner and now taking away all the milk, you have to sleep hungry tonight. Which mother would be happy if their child goes to bed hungry? As we say, hungry belly. Nobody would be happy with that. So she's very upset. And she goes on to say to her bacha, tomorrow morning when his son comes to milk for milk, I will boot him. So she intends, the mother intends, to uh, level the playing field. So Suvari, his intention really was to wake up very early in the morning and set off, you know, to uh, Varanasi to continue his journey. But he says, I want to see what would happen. So he delays, you know, his uh, departure from that home. And sure enough, early in the morning, the son comes to milk the cow, the mother cow, and my dear friends, just as she had stated to her bacha, as 
He, the young child, the young boy, approached her. She rushed towards him, and my dear friends, as she lowered her head to put him. Unfortunately, one of the horns pierced the abdomen of the child, and he died. You see what disaster occurs, my dear friends? As she is trying to, you know, bring some consolation to herself and her young child, Rabbacha, in the process, she has now killed this boy. To Suvadi's amazement, the cow, which was a white cow, as she put that child and killed him, my dear friends, her color changed. Before his eyes, that white color was transformed into black. So the white cow changes into a black cow. What is responsible for this? Immediately, my dear friends, the karma, that karma of taking a life has been given to the cow. You know, karma is one thing. You cannot run away from it. You cannot hide from it. The moment you perform that karma, it is yours. We may not see the exact reaction of that karma in our lives as this cow has seen. Transforming her color, my dear friends, from white to black. But my dear friends, inadvertently and unknown to us, slowly, my dear friends, that baggage of karma is building up upon our shoulders. When it is good karma, fear not. The good karma would become your greatest asset. Your greatest wealth is your karma. But my dear friends, when we amass a baggage of bad karma, that baggage becomes our greatest liability. That baggage of bad karma becomes our greatest enemy. As we progress in life, my dear friends, that baggage of karma is going to weigh us down and all sorts of negativities, negative situations and so on, uh, pain and suffering and difficulties are going to arise in our lives on account of that karma that we perform. So in the case of the cow, my dear friends, immediately she sees the consequences of her actions. And so she says to her, Bacha, I'm going to leave you. I am going to Varanasi to purge myself, to cleanse myself of this baggage of karma. This bad karma that I have incurred by taking the life of this boy, this boy, this, the son uh, who had come to milk her on that morning. My dear friends, so saying, the cow leaves the bacha alone. She departs to Varanasi. And of course, Suvadi is also headed in that direction, so he follows her as well. My dear friends, uh, the words of the cow, you see, she understands as well. Sometimes we think that the animals do not understand the meaning or the benefit of devotion. As she departs and leaves the bacha behind, she says, uh, it is only the blessings of Lord Shiva can cleanse me of this sin that I have performed. And so devotees, obviously, what is the first step? We must first own up. We must first accept the wrongdoing. We must first recognize that sin has been committed. It is only when we accept, my dear friends, that we have gone wrong, then the blessings and the forgiveness of Lord Shiva can be acquired for the removal of that bad karma. Abha Shiva Pad Karo Mori Naiya The blessings of Sadaa Shiva Bhagwan removes all pain, sickness, suffering, difficulties from the life of his devotees. It takes us safely across this Bhausaga. 
अब शिवा पार करो मोरी नैया हो अब शिवा पार करो My dear friends, eventually Suvari arrives in Varanasi uh, together with the cow, the white cow that has changed color and has become a black cow. And he is witnessing, my dear friends, what is happening. She enters into the water of Narmada River. Narmada, of course, is a tributary of Ganga. So she enters into the water of Narmada, and that is at the Nandikeshwara, Tirita, a special place of Tirata, upon the banks of the Narmada River, flowing through Varanasi, that holy city. And to his amazement, my dear friends, as the cow enters into the water, as she, her body becomes submerged under the purifying waters of um, the waters of that holy river, my dear friends, uh, and as she re-emerges, so she disappears under the water, and as she re-emerges out of the water, my dear friends, uh, that black color has once again disappeared, and she returns to the original white color that she had before she had taken the life of that child who had come to milk her. What does this represent? It represents, my dear friends, the ability of the waters of Ganga, whether it is in India, the Narmada, Triveni, Saraswati, all of these holy rivers are connected, my dear friends. It has the ability, my dear devotees, to purify, to purge, to cleanse us of 
transgressions, negativities, whatever bad karma and so on we accumulate in life. And this is why the cow has visited Varanasi, understanding the benefits of coming to this holy place of Tirat. This is why Suvadi's father had come to Varanasi to perform Tirat there. This is why his mother had requested her ashes. And of course, this is what he's holding in, her, in his hands, her ashes. This is why she has requested that her ashes be brought to um, Varanasi as well, to be offered into this holy place of Tirith. And some may say, well, Baba, we are at a disadvantage because many of us may never be able to reach Varanasi. So how do we attain the same blessings? It is said, my dear friends, when this katha is read, those who listen to this katha, my dear friends, receive the blessings and benefits as if you have gone to Varanasi and performed tirith there. More than that, not just listening to the katha, you know the parrot could listen to a katha too, eh? The dog, the kutta could listen to a, a, a katha too. But Bhagwan says, we must listen to this katha and we must enact in our lives, we must practice in our lives what has been taught in the katha. My dear friends, what beautiful lessons we have learned in this Shiv Puran katha tonight. Starting off with how the father taught his sons to pray to Lord Shiva. Even when he had died, my dear friends, what happened? They didn't say, well, look, forget about what the old people used to do. They continued, my dear friends, in the wonderful pattern, the wonderful example that the father would have taught his family. And so, my dear friends, when we teach our children the lessons of devotion, we have left them with the best gift of life. You know, you might leave a big inheritance for them, you know. And if you have not taught them well, as you leave this world, they spend it out. As we say, they blow it out because you have not taught them well. But when you teach them spirituality, my dear friends, when we are no longer here, they will continue to live that life of discipline, of devotion and dedication as this family has done. At this point in time, Karahujai, let us all stand as we join together in Shiva Ji Ki Arati. Sajancha varshitam yuktam Vahinayo jitam maya Deepam grahan devasya Trailokyam timiratam Jai Shiva Omkara Hara Shiva Omkara
to an end for devotions here tonight. Let us all bow our heads in his final prayer. We give thanks to our divine Lord, Sadashi Bhagwan, it is for your blessings, O Prabhu, that you have come together tonight in this first night, Shiva Mahapurani Yagya. We pray, O Lord, that you will place your protective hands upon us. May you continue to safeguard us and protect us against all dangers and difficulties. With utmost reverence, O Lord, we surrender repeatedly onto your lotus-like feet. Mantrahinam Kriyahinam Bhaktihinam Janadhanam Yad Poochitam Mayadevam Paripurnam Tadastumi Tvameva Mata Chapita Tvameva Tvameva Bandhusya Sakha Tvameva Tvameva Vidya Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Prem Sibureshi Gajananda Swami Ki Shumapati Mahadeva Ki Pavana Sutta Hanuman Ki Shibrindavan Bihari Lala Ki Uresa Jagaranath Ki बोलो भाई सब संतन की सियापति रामचंद्र की कलेक्टिवली ना लाउड टोन ऑफ़ वॉइस विच आन विक्ट्री टू वधर्मा जी सच्चे सनातन धर्म की जय जय सीताराम आसलीजी कैन यू बी सीटेड वोटिस
Media Television is not only the first Hindu TV station in Trinidad and Tobago, but Sankhya TV also has the most coverage. You can find Sankhya TV on Facebook by searching for Sankhya Television. There you